Hey there, Wall Street Warriors. Welcome back to Investing Lighthouse, the channel that's more exciting than a Black Friday sale at the stock market. Today, we're hitting the highway of investment wisdom, riding shotgun with none other than the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett. We will crack open his billion-dollar brain to answer the question, how many stocks should you have in your portfolio? So, buckle up everyone, this is going to be one heck of a ride. Buffett has often been quoted as saying, Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes little sense for those who know what they're doing. He advocates that an informed investor doesn't need to diversify extensively. Instead, they should focus on a few companies they truly understand and have confidence in their long-term prospects. This approach, often termed focus investing, empowers you to place calculated bets on your highest conviction ideas. That's like saying you don't need to date the entire school to find your sweetheart. Pick one, or a few, who you truly understand and love, and stick with them. But hey, no judgment if you're feeling lost in the whirlwind of Wall Street. If this is the case, Buffett has a different type of advice and recommends sticking with a low-cost S&P 500 index fund you'll get a piece of the action by achieving broad diversification while capitalizing on the long-term growth of the American economy. It's like attending a buffet. You get a bit of everything. Let's chew on this. Is it better to keep all your eggs in one basket or scatter them so far apart that you forget where they are? The answer is neither. Owning only one stock exposes you to excessive risk. High stakes, high risk. If that one company hits an iceberg, you're going down with the ship. Conversely, if you own more stocks than there are episodes of The Simpsons, you're watering down the impact of your best ideas. And you're also complicating your life, as managing a vast portfolio can feel like trying to follow every trend on TikTok overwhelming and honestly not that effective. Let's play with some numbers to illustrate this point. Suppose you're running a portfolio of 100 different stocks. Suddenly, one of those stocks doubles in value. Sounds great, right? Not quite. See, that winning stock only makes up 1% of your portfolio. So, while it did double, your overall portfolio value only increased by about 1%. It's like finding a $20 bill in an old pair of jeans pocket. A pleasant surprise, but it doesn't do much for your overall wealth. Numerous studies have found that the risk-reducing benefits of adding more stocks drop significantly. After about 20 to 30 stocks, kind of like my motivation for exercise after 5 minutes on a treadmill, some studies even propose a smaller number of stocks, like the study completed by Frank Raley and Keith Brown who argues that owning around 12 to 18 stocks provides about 90% of the maximum benefit of diversification. As you add more stocks beyond this range, you merely add more average picks to your portfolio and dilute your best ideas. Remember that a critical factor to consider when diversifying is correlation. If you're filling a portfolio with stocks that move together like synchronized swimmers, you're not really diversified. Correlation plays a significant role when you're looking to build a concentrated portfolio. Try to find stocks that dance to different tunes to smooth out volatility. Historically, Buffett has kept a relatively concentrated portfolio. In the early 1950s, when Warren Buffett was managing funds for his investment partnership, he spotted an opportunity in a little-known insurance company named Geico. He studied the company thoroughly, understood its business model, and believed it was significantly undervalued. Acting on his conviction, he invested 65% of his partnership's assets in Geico. Yes, you heard it right, 65%. Now, if that's not concentration, I don't know what is. This all-in strategy paid off spectacularly. The Geico investment turned into a gold mine. 
with the company's intrinsic value and stock price soaring over the next decade. This bet significantly contributed to the early success of Buffett's investment partnership, reinforcing his belief in a concentrated portfolio. Another example takes place in the 1960s, when Buffett reportedly had nearly 40% of his portfolio in American Express. After its stock tanked due to the infamous salad oil scandal, this high conviction move paid off handsomely, and American Express remains a significant holding in Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio today. Buffett has often discussed his views on portfolio allocation in his letters to Berkshire Hathaway's shareholders. In one of his legendary letters, he wrote, We try to make large investments in businesses that we believe we understand well. This approach is quite different from the widely recommended strategy of holding a large number of stocks so that gains by a few can offset other losses. We believe that a policy of portfolio concentration may well decrease risk. However, you won't see Buffett making a 65% bet on a single stock nowadays. Why? Because Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio is colossal. A few billion dollars, which was once a significant bet for Buffett, is now just a drop in the ocean of Berkshire's holdings. Moreover, the massive size of Berkshire's portfolio means that significant positions could unintentionally influence the market price of a stock. It's like a blue whale trying to hide in a public swimming pool. It just can't. Thus, Berkshire's investments need to be spread out among many stocks to avoid such a market influence. So, while Buffett's heart might yearn for the good old days of high conviction, high concentration bets, his hands are tied due to the sheer size of his portfolio and the necessary prudence required in managing such vast assets. Investing is also about seizing those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, and Warren Buffett is a staunch advocate for striking while the iron is hot. He's a true opportunist when it comes to investing and believes in loading up on stocks when they're undervalued. When the market panics, most investors run for the exit, but not Buffett. He waits for these moments, ready to pounce on the discounted prices. Let's recall when he applied this philosophy during the dot-com crash in the early 2000s. As tech stocks plummeted, he spotted a diamond in the rough, Coca-Cola. Buffett believed in the resilience of this iconic brand and its ability to bounce back after the market crash. He loaded up on Coca-Cola shares when they were trading at a heavy discount. Today, Berkshire Hathaway's stake in Coca-Cola is valued at several billion dollars, one of its most successful investments to date. Remember the financial crisis of 2008? While it was a nightmare for most, it was an opportunity for some. Buffett is famously quoted for saying, We simply attempt to be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy only when others are fearful. And he stood by his word. He made a string of investments during this time. And his $5 billion investment in Goldman Sachs, a decision that resulted in massive gains for Berkshire Hathaway, was just the tip of the iceberg. But what does all of this mean for you? It's simple. Invest in your highest conviction ideas, especially when they're undervalued. Don't shy away from loading up on shares when the opportunity presents itself. Like a limited edition sneaker drop, putting money into your highest conviction ideas makes more sense than your 30th best idea. And that's a wrap, folks. Investing isn't just a numbers game. It's about knowledge, patience, and courage. Diversify, but don't dilute your high conviction bets. Be bold when others are fearful and always understand your investments, risk tolerance, and investment goals. Investing is not about chasing the highest return. It's about achieving sustainable growth over the long term and sleeping soundly at night, knowing you've made the best decisions you could based on your circumstances and aspirations. We can't wait to see where your investing journey takes you. Let us know in the comments below what investment topics you'd like us to discuss next. 
If you enjoyed this deep dive into Warren Buffett's investing wisdom, give us a thumbs up, share the love, and subscribe for more insights. Until next time, keep learning, keep investing, and keep growing.